everyone. Today we'll be doing the acidity of vinegar lab. Okay, so the first couple steps is cleaning and setting up your burette, which as you can see, I have here. This is our burette, okay. It is a very precise uh, piece of equipment to measure volumes of liquids. And I am going to do this lab for trial one and then just give you the data for trial two because it's very hard for me to set this lab up by myself. But if you can see, we have, where is it? The meniscus of our sample is right at zero. It's a little below zero, but we're gonna say that we have a full 50 mils here, which is how much is this burette when it is full and it is full currently. So we are gonna say we have 50 mils of NaOH as our starting solution. Now we may have to add more in, so don't get too picky with that. I am gonna write that down right now and I'll give you the data uh, when we're done. So now we're actually gonna go ahead and make our vinegar solution that we're gonna test. Um, the first step, this is not in your procedure, so I'm adding this in, but this is to help with the um, stirring issue that comes up in this lab. I'm adding in what's called a stir bar. So you can see that little thing looks like a pill. This is a stir bar. I'm gonna put it on a hot plate and turn the stir on, and it's actually going to allow it to spin, and it stirs your solution for you without you having to do it. So I've obtained seven mils of vinegar, so our uh, vinegar initial is equal to seven mils plus 100 milliliters of H2O. And this is just to give it a little more volume to work with. It's not actually changing the concentration of your acid, which is what you'll be calculating. You'll use the seven mils for that. But I wanna make sure it matches up with your procedure. So this is 100 mils of deionized water. Okay, I'm gonna give that just a little swirl, get it all good and mixed together. And then I'm gonna add in some phenolphthalein. This is labeled with P because we bought a big bottle and separated it. And phenolphthalein is an acid base indicator. Three, four. It is more of a base indicator because as you can tell, I added this to an acidic solution and nothing happened. It's still clear. So that means we should see a pretty cool color change as we add in NaOH. So I'm gonna put NaOH on our, um, on our hot plate that has a stirring mechanism. Maybe get this arranged in the best way possible. into my um, into my Erlenmeyer flask, just so that way if it splashes, it's gonna splash into the flask and not out of the flask. So we are gonna go ahead and start the stir bar. So this part actually looks pretty cool. If you can see it spinning in there, that's just the magnet in the stir plate saying, um, or giving the uh, bar a field to spin around in. So what we're gonna actually do is I'm gonna open up the blue stopcock here, right here in our burette. When it is parallel, it actually will allow liquid to come through. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna do a couple of these just so you can see. Come on, little fella. There we go. So that we can see um, color change as this base is added. So hopefully you saw that right away, that color change. And now that you know what's happening with the burette, I'm actually gonna get you closer so you can see a better color change here or a more efficient color change. We already started to see a color change. So I need this going in drip by drip because I want it to be the lightest pink possible for at least a minute, okay? Um, that is when we know we've hit that neutralization point, that titration point, which is what we're looking for. So what we're doing right now is a neutralization reaction via a titration. So you can see the pink is showing up in the solution 
but it's not staying. So we need to add it until it starts to stay. And this is why you have to spin it constantly. Ooh, let's check it. Cause see, as it spins, it disappears. And that means that we have not quite gotten there yet, but we're getting close. Okay, oh, it's getting close. All right, so it's disappeared again. It did not stay for a minute. So now we're doing like drop at a time. I know my arm is in the way, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's two drops. I might have done too many. Let's see if it fades. If I kick this up a notch, maybe it'll fade a little bit. All right, so we are past our titration point um, by a drop. So you can see how quickly that happened. Um, and I'm gonna go off the amount that we used and we are gonna kind of go from there to do our calculation. So see how quick that was. Um, and this is all used to determine the acidity of the vinegar, which we don't know the amount of. So one source of error, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one to you, is that one, literally one too many drops went in here. If I would have been able to stop it, but I was trying to get my arm out of the way so you guys could see what was going on, that's my fault. If I could have stopped this one drop prior, it would have been the light pink, which is what we want. So this is a little dark due to one too many drops of NaOH. So looking up here now, you can see, let me get my phone where you can see it. You can see what our final volume is, which is right at like 3.7, 3.8, I'll get the right number um, and put it in the data. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing with five mils and we're gonna compare and see if we end up with the same molarities both times, which we should not, but it shouldn't be too far off because of how pink this one is. So I'll come back in one minute. Okay, everybody, so this is trial two. Um, I have put in five mils of vinegar plus the 100 mils of water. I'm gonna start this just on a drip so we can kind of get a better look at it and see how it goes um, and get our measurement. But we knew though using less vinegar, we should have to use less NaOH to uh, neutralize it. So it's starting to stay, as you can tell, but this way I can get my hand where I need to to help cut it off. So as you can tell, as these pink drops are going in, it's starting to spread throughout the solution. So let's just stop it for a minute. Let's see, okay, so it's still disappearing, but a lot slower. So we're gonna try to get this to go even slower this time. See, one drop too many. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. So now we will measure our difference here as well. And then I'm gonna do this one more time and actually show you what a real one should look like. Cause I think if I do it and then I just show you what it should look like will help a lot. Um, because I'm also trying to videotape and do this at the same time. So it's a little bit more difficult for me to do this properly. So I will run this for you one more time, but I will just show you what the end product is. So, as I'm measuring this up here, we have used 6.23. So, so we have used a total of 6.3 milliliters for that round. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, that's not right. <laughs> Definitely. We only use 2.4. 2.4 used, I was reading from the final mark. So that means we used a total of 
2.4, giving us a final amount of 43.9 in there. So as you can see here, I've got our data. This is for trial one. So we initially started with 50 mils. We ended up finishing at 46.3, which means we used 3.7 mils. Um, I've got our original vinegar and I've got our molarity here. So what you're gonna solve for is the molarity of the vinegar. For trial two, I'll try to get this where you can see both of them. For trial two, we went from 46.3 because I didn't even fill up the burette. I just used it from where we were at. And we got down to 43.9, which means we used 2.4 mils here. Again, same concentration. So we'll just kind of go from there. And like I said, I'm going to try to videotape and show you what a, a good titration should look like since it was difficult for me to monitor that and the video at the same time. So guys, this is what an actual titration should look like. Um, so I, I can do it, as you can tell, just took me a minute. Um, but this very, very faint pink, where when you look over top, it pretty much looks clear actually, but this very faint pink is the color that we want, which is where the actual equivalence point is. So I just wanted you to see what one really looks like, but we're gonna still use the data collected. Um, at least knowing that your titrations ended up looking the same, your calculation should give you the same molarity both times. So please do the math, ask any questions, and we will talk about this in class.